they were like the Uber of the day. They were the disruptor. Oh yeah, and um, and it's and it sort of set the precedence for other manufacturers. I mean, it didn't take long before um, the Escort was phased out um, because it just became uncompetitive. And even cars like the Lancia 037 and the Stratos, which were epic Group B cars, they really couldn't compete with the Audi Quattro. No, and, and uh, if you look back, I think um, Marco Allen at the time, the, the, the Stratos was his favourite car. Every opportunity he had, he wanted to try and drive that car. But the reality became that it just wasn't competitive anymore. Well, you've got one, Stuart. We're going to have a sneak look in a minute. But how exciting are these cars? Today? Look, they're, they're, they're definitely something else. Um, I'm very privileged to, to be able to, to drive one. Um, I think Walter Roll mentioned that when you accelerate in your normal road car in first gear from 30 kilometers an hour to 60 kilometers an hour, the acceleration in this car is the exact same in sixth gear. Well, that's it's just it's phenomenal. It's just amazing. It's just it's a and whole course, new world. And of course now you know we've got these fabulous uh, world rally cars, which are now even faster than these cars. So which is what quite I remarkable. wanted to talk about very briefly is how good are our current drivers? Oh. I think when you look at um, any of the in-car footage, for example, last weekend of Rally Sweden, um, the, the in-car footage, they just look like they're going for a, like you and I would drive up to the shop. And when you watch the footage from the outside, it's just phenomenal. They're five foot in the air, jumps are 40 plus meters. Um, it's just, you've got to realize that they are driving the best cars, obviously, but they're driving them so well. Well, let's show our fans, guys, how good this fabulous car is. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Well, there you go. This is um, our version of the of the Audi Sport Quattro. Um, it's been. And you ran this car in Rally Australia a few years back uh, when you just got the, when you just purchased the car. Yeah, the car was owned at the time by Dave Thompson, and um, he also owned a, another car at the same time. But um, yeah, I was very privileged to get to do a couple of stages in it for de as a demonstration, and um, we ran it unrestricted, as this type of car should be driven, so that people can see the raw speed hear the sound that they that they were so ominous for that five cylinder bark coming through the forest and yeah it was it was it was a very very exciting couple of days well it certainly was we were there doing the commentary and we know most of the fans stayed to watch you come through because uh, you know to have a world championship rally and a classic component attached to the rally with an audi quattro uh, replica in it was just fabulous for the rally fans ah oh, and it's most people who are involved in rallying, be the, 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 the new young generation that are up and coming, everyone always remembers the classic cars. We're going to uh, have a quick look through the car and you're yep. going to show us how it all works. Yeah, we can do that, no problem at all. Okay, so this is, this is the, the five-cylinder Audi Quattro engine. Um, this particular car is the, the last of the version, um, the S2 replica. Um, these engines, when they were run by Audi, they had close to six, maybe 660 horsepower. This is a, a detuned version because obviously the parts are getting very hard to get nowadays. So the last thing you want to do is have something go wrong. Um, as you can see, there's a couple of things on this particular car that's slightly different from the factory ones. Um, nowadays, we've got a lot of carbon fiber technology. So the inlet manifold is made of carbon fiber. You have your large, um, electric fly-by-wire throttle, so we don't have it doesn't have a throttle cable. It's like the more modern WRC cars. Massive turbos they used in these cars years ago. Fair bit of lag down low, but geez, when the when it all starts happening, it's um, you've got to have your wits about you. That's for sure when you drive it. Um, the car was built in New Zealand, um, and it was built by Force Motorsport. Um, they fabrication and the, the structurally designed roll cage etc has been very well designed okay here we have it the driver's office um, obviously this car was built 
to the current regulations, so those extra roll cage bars for safety. Um, this car in particular has a sequential gearbox, six speed. Um, the hitch pattern gearbox, to be quite honest, when, you, when it's on power, you've got one hand on the steering wheel, you're just changing gears all the time. So much safer to have a sequential and much quicker. Um, funny things about this car, Ari Vatnan drove it, and um, Ari's obviously way taller than I am, but he insisted on putting these little extensions on the, the ignition switch and things so that he could quickly just turn it off rather than lean forward. And uh, we haven't changed it, Ari, it's still the exact same. Um, you don't need an array of gauges like they did many, many years ago. Now we've got our RPM gauge and everything else being electronically controlled by the, the computer. And um, we use a Maxxis ECU on this one. Um, there's oil pressure failure, all the, the, the things that you have to have. The hydraulic handbrake, um, it's just a quick release stand up one. And the car being built by the Kiwis, the very top of the handbrake is actually a, 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 a New Zealand coin. Um, the, we have the onboard fire extinguisher. This is our, here we can see what, what gear we're in. Uh, at the moment it's in neutral. You can hear the fuel pumps. Everything is very noisy and you, when you drive this car, you have to drive it with headsets on, just driving on the, on the tarmac stages because uh, the noise is horrific between all the gears and, and all the functioning pumps that, that make it all happen. Start procedure for, the, for, for this particular car. Um, we obviously have our kill switch here. So we switch the kill switch on. We switch the ignition on. You can hear the twin fuel pumps in the back really humming away, sending the fuel up to the fuel rail. Um, we just let that circulate for a little bit. We just crack the throttle open, probably about 10%, and then hit the magic start button. So we'll switch that off so that you can actually hear what we're trying to say. Um, there you have it. All done.